Hello and welcome back to the Oh No 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 podcast, where after shattering the Invincibles, Rafe Rovers can now turn their attention on a trip down the M8 to Greenock, where they'll be hoping to be party poopers this weekend. It's uh, Greenock Morton's 150th anniversary, the Capolo side are uh, hopefully going to be getting their bubble burst by Neil Collins, who'll be looking to leave Dougie Emery, greeting face like a child, saying, that's not what I wanted. I'm your host tonight, Robbie Weir, and joining me, we've got our own sort of midfield trio uh, as such. Um, the Sean Byrne of the podcast, adding a bit of balance. We've got Blair Hopcroft. How you doing, Blair? Oh, I'll take that, mate. Thanks for that. I'm delighted with that. We've got the man who's made hundreds of appearances and uh, he's changed a bit of his role recently after uh, Monday night's uh, podcast that's going to be coming up in the future uh, with Alan Russell from The Trust. We've got Duncan Cameron, who's the uh, Ross Matthews of the podcast. Yes, quite happy with that. Thank you. I'm not convinced uh, Ross will be too pleased with the comparison, but I'll take it. Ah, nah, I'm sure he'll be absolutely fine. And then finally, uh, returning back after a, a bit of an absence, but we're all delighted that he's back now, it's uh, the Scott Brown of the podcast, Scott Fleming. How are you doing, Scott? Yeah, not too bad. Uh was back home for a few days. Unfortunately, couldn't be at the, the Rovers game, but it was for a good reason. It was for uh, actually Alistair's wedding, who has been on the podcast a couple of times this season, so and he's already jetted off to South Korea for his honeymoon, so uh, hopefully they have a good uh, honeymoon over there. But no, it was a really good day, and obviously the Rovers winning just kind of topped off. No, absolutely perfect. Exactly what you'd want. Certainly better than uh, the time that Leslie was uh, his wedding day. Uh, what Martin Hardy scoring against us in that game at East End. Oh, Let's not talk about that. <laughs> um, so really... This week at Starts Park, not really any major news coming out other than the, the update about Lewis Vaughan Duncan. Um, so Lewis Vaughan's obviously going to be ruled out until the new year. I mean, is there really anything other to describe it than a, a massive blow for our causes getting that sort of time frame? Well, I mean, I was almost a little bit relieved by the time that came around. I think there was so much... Um... Uh, worst case thinking that goes on. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just a an eternal pessimist. But actually, like four months, that's not too bad in the grand scheme of things. Like obviously, it's not having him for four months is terrible. But when you think about the injury layoffs he's had in the past, and even when you hear like, "Oh, it's a bad hamstring injury," I mean, uh, like you think like Kieran Boys missed months and months and months and months over the last couple of years with hamstring injuries. Aaron Hickey. I was I was geared up for the news that we wouldn't see him again this season. So actually, I mean, four months, October, November, December, end of January. If we can get Vonnie back for the end of January, I'd be delighted. That's straight into the, the business end of the season, but still plenty of time to go. So yes, the headline news that we don't have him um, for a significant part of the, the season is is terrible. But Actually, in the grand scheme of things, I think it could have been a lot worse. Yeah, a hundred percent. It's there's a very sort of weird sort of synchronization within the division of like you look at Falkirk and they lose out on uh, McKeever up until January as well. So he's going to be the same. He's sort of eight weeks or, or so um, that he'll be back. So obviously a bit sooner. But then as well on top of that, Anton Dowd's been out for the rest of the season. So. There's kind of a niche market that came up. Um, a lot of top-end championship clubs that were looking for centre-forwards. Uh, loan market did come to a close. Um, Neil Collins was out in the courier just sort of saying, I mean, as you'd really probably expect from him, it was sort of needing a sign-in to make us better, not just someone that's a number. Scott, how how hard do you think that'll be for Rovers to try and bring in someone that's a free agent that can actually add? Because I'm sure there's plenty of players that would want to play in the Scottish Championship, but finding the right one's a bit of a, a difficult proposition. Yeah, completely. I think you're now in that market where there's people start to speculate, like, there must be a reason this guy hasn't been picked up, whether it's injury-prone or that he just wasn't good enough at whatever club he was at last time or whatever or he's maybe wanting money that he's not getting like at clubs as well. There's loads of reasons why players might be out of... Like, I mean, even, I know it's a much sort of different level, but you seen for a while until a couple of weeks ago, like Ryan Jack left Rangers in the summer there and hadn't had a club until it was... I think it was still out the chancellor window by the time he got a club. And he, he's away over to, I think it's Turkey's second division or something. 
Um, but like, aye, it's stuff like that. You do wonder, but I, I'm not going to lie. I was surprised when we first started to hear about this potentially uh, Dabo coming in because, like, I, as soon as I heard like that there was a chance of this maybe happening, I, I messaged one of my mates over here in Holland who's a, a big Coventry City fan, and he was like, "Look, he he was Mister Consistent for us in that sort of." couple of years spell they were getting to the playoffs, got to the playoff final. Obviously he was gutted that they couldn't get up, uh, and that Dabble missed his penalty. But at the same time, like he was really liked within that fan base. So I think we knew that coming in that if this guy can get fit, I think we've got a pretty good player on our hand to be able probably somebody that he's if you're being honest, these sort of signings now, if you're able to get somebody that's been at a higher level, they're in it to be in a sort of shot window for January to be going elsewhere. And to be honest, yeah. I'm I'm fully expecting that Dabo's going in January if he gets any game time because I think he's gonna potentially be too good for us and actually could get like a high end League One club down south or something like that if he shows his fitness and he's any good. So um it's stuff like that, but I do hope that we can get a striker in the door because like Vonnie's gonna be a big miss. He scored what, nineteen goals? 20 goals last season, we don't have a striker like that right now. Like Jack Hamilton hopefully can score more goals this season that when he's uh, kind of he's now getting back to his sort of full fitness again. But have I, I don't really see. I, I think we've sp- one of years I've spoke about it before. We don't really have an out and out goal scorer in our ranks other than Vonnie. So I think that's definitely something that uh, the manager's going to have to look at. And hopefully uh, that he does have some sort of black book with names that he can actually go and see G Fancy come in for even three months and just put yourself back in that shot window. Yeah, it's um, the option to look down south. I know that we've sort of speculated that about a few times. Um, I noticed actually in the papers, uh, Blair, that Aid had sort of said that they, they're very much also in the market for, for looking for a centre forward. And they'd also mentioned that uh, they decided to go against. Um, bringing in Tommy Adeloy, uh, who was with Partick Thistle and previously with Air as well. Do you think that is something that you might expect to see? Sort of Rovers look into that market to be able to go down that route, or just is there anyone that jumps out for you, or what are your thoughts on the whole situation? That's that's the thing. There isn't anybody that jumps out. That's kind of half the problem. Um, Adeloy jumps out just because we've heard of him. I think as much I... as anything else. Um, I do quite like the fact that Collins is shopping in that that market where he's kind of got he's going to have contacts and he's got links down south and across the pond or whatever that that maybe open doors for us that that we wouldn't have thought of before. I think Scott's right in terms of of like why have these boys not got clubs and money will be a part of it. I I, I genuinely think there's this kind of weird kind of cyclical thing that happens. So you 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 get to the end of the sort of traditional transfer window. And you've got these boys that are unattached, but clubs are thinking, do you know what? We can save ourselves a bit of money and get somebody on loan. So they shop the loan market for a bit of time and then the loan market doesn't work out. And then they're back to the free agents because now that's your only hit till January. And so those guys that were maybe asking for five or six hundred pounds a week more than we were willing to pay, all of a sudden their their market value kind of goes up a little bit because yeah. they're it. Like, if, if you're wanting somebody in the door now, they've got to be a free agent. And they can't have played for another club in this window because they're they're then no longer eligible to play for you. So you've got to be shopping in that market. And there will be guys. Do you know I mean, the, Dabo's a, a great example of a guy who started the season at the, the PFA unattached players camp thing that they do um, and played a game, I think it was against Cambridge or something he played. But he was playing with... Um, Who's the guy that used to play for West Ham and Man United? Ravel Morrison. Ravel Morrison, yeah. Um, playing with him, like wild. Some of the some of the guys that have been involved yeah. in that. And the boy was it Carol Jenkinson as well was one of the names yeah. I saw. Yeah, yeah. He was going uh, for mega money, like not that long ago. Dwight Gale, I so, think, played in that game. Who's yeah. got hips since? Yeah, that's right. I mean, he was playing. He was playing in the Premier League down south for for Newcastle. What four or five years ago? Like, it's not that long time. So these guys are, are without a club for whatever reason. But like I say, now they're your only option. If you need somebody, and we kind of do, then your your market kind of changes slightly. And your, I imagine your your bargaining power 
changes a little bit as well. Like those guys have now kind of got the power because a guy looking to come up here, if you're a striker, <clears throat> you've got six clubs in the championship probably looking to sign you. Like you get your you get an agent on board and all of a sudden you've got six teams outbidding each other. Um so yeah, no, it'll be really interesting. But I do I do think the Vaughn thing forces our hand a little bit. I do think we need another we need another forward thinking player. Um and obviously now that the loan market's gone, you've you've got to be really looking at a free agent. The downside to that is you're looking at what, maybe three, four weeks before they're even fit enough really to make a big impact. So you need to kind of do it now, like sooner the better, because you're going to be you're going to be well into the, the clocks changing before you've actually got them on the pitch. It's yeah. going to be like um, like Jerry Maguire, isn't it? Like if you're a if you're a striker worth your salt at this moment in time, you almost want two phones, and you just want Neil Collins on one, probably John Potter, and uh, who's about yeah. United Graham Matthew on the other, and you just don't want to be on the phone to them at the same time so they can hear totally. what the other one's saying. Because that's it. Like if you're, if you know, if, if you could guarantee that Tommy Adelaide was going to be fighting fit for the rest of the season, Air or the Rovers, I think would would snap your hand off for him at the moment. Or Partick, and uh, oh, Partick, or, Partick yeah. or Falkirk, yeah. Um, and that's so as you say, it kind of switches from being a buyer's market to a seller's market. But because it's that, it's it's like either you go with what you've got or you probably overpay for whoever is yeah. left in this very small market so it will be interesting to see kind of if anyone manages to to rustle something up because that's the other thing that brexit's really ruined the the wild card option for this mm-hmm. um so sad that's where yeah you would have had your your enterprising serbian agents would have been uh yeah. getting involved in all of this business as well but that's Sadly, much less likely now. I also, a, uh, quickly, that. just to finish on this point, I, yeah. I also was speaking to my dad about this at the weekend. I wonder if, with Collins working in America, that he's actually probably now working on guys that he could potentially bring in in January that mm. thinks like they'll be good for us, but their season finishes like within the next month, basically. And then it was the same as Stanton. We signed them in December. But he couldn't play till the first of January till his contract was up at uh, what was it Dundalk? He was it. So yeah, I, yeah. I wonder if there's going to be stuff like this, maybe potentially in the background that Collins is saying to the club, "Look, there's these couple of players that are out of contract in whatever in America, and they're looking to come back over to Europe, and I think they'll be good and whatever. Uh, can we look at somehow fe- making this feasible?" I think that could be going on in the background. I'm not saying that it would be... Obviously, we can't do that till January, but I, I just think that that's definitely a line of thing that um, I think that we now could be in the market for with the, the manager we've gone for. I think it's uh, shades of the Daniel O'Reilly situation last season. Mm. It's probably like the ultimate of showcase what you can do. We'll give you a short-term deal. Oh, actually, we wouldn't mind you re-signing, and then it gets a better deal elsewhere. Um yeah, I think uh, the the main other news that came came out on the socials was um, showing Callum Fordyce back. Um, he's obviously looks like he's going full pelt in training. Duncan, just for yourself, how big a boost do you think that'll be to a more ex- another experienced player to add to the bench and to add a bit of depth to the squad on top of what's already came back in the last few weeks? Yeah, I think that'll be huge, absolutely huge. Um, again, I think we're going to have to get used to the fact that we might actually have. Like experienced, really good quality defenders who actually can't get into the team from week to week, which mm-hmm. is a real alien concept, I think, to us. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're, we're hopefully uh, starting to face up to that reality. But that just gives you so many other options and gives you that versatility. And then the bit that I think goes under noticed or, or underappreciated. You and Murray get smashed in the face like four or five times a week, and he has to just keep on going because yeah. we've never got anybody to replace him. But it's actually the first time that happens. You've got, you know what? Actually, we've got somebody who is, you know, of equal standing who can come in. You know, you you no longer have to be forcing Paul Hanlon to pay, play through a hamstring twinge or any of that kind of stuff. That's going to be a huge boost. Um, as well as the the literal quality that um, Callum Fordyce brings. I think that applies across the back line. You could probably hear Kieran Freeman's 
quads screaming um, at like the seventieth minute mark when Frankie Davo came on. It was like, "Yep, thank you very much. That'll do nicely." I'm um, uh, can get a wee break now, and uh, you can ease players back in as well, which is the the positive. Um, so yeah, to to turn to Saturday, um, just both teams going at this one, Blair on identical form um, in terms of their last five, three losses, one draw, one win. How important do you think it is just to, I know it's a bit of a self-fulfilling question, just to build on last Saturday, get a bit of momentum going and try and get away from the, the bottom end of the league that we sort of started with? Yeah, I think it's, it is massive. Like we've talked a lot about that idea of momentum and um, it went the other way, losing to the pars and, and losing in the cup against air and stuff. Like you just get on a, you got on a wee streak of losing games and it, it, it bleeds in and you're, I do think the luck thing we've talked a lot about, and there is an element of you make your own luck, but I think there's also that kind of self-fulfilling prophecy of like when you're down, everything just seems to go against you kind of thing. So mm-hmm. um, I do think building on that is is important. I think it's it's also a mark of, of <clears throat> whether or not, whether or not we have actually been in that false position. So, like, because I genuinely believe we have been, but the the absolute truth of the matter is that we've got nothing to base that on other than gut feeling, because there were players missing, there were injuries and all the rest of it, and we didn't win the games. We had red cards and all the other stuff, the penalties that we never got, and blah blah blah. But the the absolute truth of it is, if you want to be up at the business end in this league, you've got to be going to Capolo, and you've probably got to be winning this game on, at the weekend. Um, and you know we've got players back. Um, Fordyce back in the squad, Brown back, potentially starting even maybe because he's he's played a bit under already coming off the bench, so is is hopefully that kind of step closer to, to starting again. You you've really got to be putting your marker down if we are a team that's going to challenge for this league, which you know every every other team in the league will laugh at us saying that at the moment based on what's happened at the beginning of the season. But um, I still genuinely think we can be. Um, then we're gonna have to we're gonna have to win this game probably, just to keep that momentum going. I think it's um, it's probably put under a bit more of a spotlight with the fact that Falkirk and Air are playing as well. Um, yeah. So you've got those two going head to head. So someone's dropping points somewhere. It's just a question of who. Um, so yeah, Scott, I just want to come to you uh, next. Rovers haven't won away from home since the opening League Cup game at Stirling. Um, is that quite a concern for you, given how we've been uh, and where we're at? And just do you think Rovers need to put in a big performance away from home to sort of try and dispel that and give a, a get a bit more belief going forward? Because, eh, what are your thoughts on it? Uh, I, I mean, I, I think we we also did get some tough away games in that. I mean, we've been twice in air already, like. <laughs> I mean, yeah. uh, and Air seem to be playing at home every week from every time I look at the fixtures. But I think, uh, and we also did win at Kirkcaldy and Dyser, but not that anyone's counting that. But <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, no, I, I think the worrying thing for me it, it, to begin with was the fact that we had like the Air game. We had uh, the, I know that the Air game didn't go well the first time round, the fact that it kind of changed on the, the penalty in the red card, but we weren't creating chances in these games. Whereas, like in the sort of well, the th- first half of the league cup, uh, the Challenge Cup game, we were all o- we were all over them for the first half basically, mm-hmm. and we we're two 0 up, and it was looking like this is right, this is the Collins effect, and then the second half happened. But I think it's, and then again, there was obviously Dunfermline, the fact that the red card early on, and but to be honest. For a while in that Dunfermline game, I genuinely thought, despite us playing rubbish in that game, I thought there's a chance we get a nil nil out of this because they're garbage. Like they, they're no good. And I think it was the fact that they had all the ball and they were probably going to start hammering the goal down at some point. But it was the fact that it was that sort of deflected goal that just killed everybody's momentum. And then you just went, they probably will go in and get a second now just to kill us off. But I do think that had they not got that goal. If you go into like the final ten minutes, you pro- possibly get someone out of that, but without playing well. I think now we've shown in the last couple of games that we're creating chances. We're actually playing some decent stuff again. 
I, th- I mean, obviously, I didn't watch the game on Saturday, but um, I watched the highlights, and I thought, going by the highlights, the first half, we looked like we clearly were doing fine, and we were actually creating mm-hmm. enough. And I mean, I-, I looked at the stats after the game on Saturday, and I seen that there was only like, I think it was like 12 shots in the full game, and only like one on target. And I thought, well, clearly it wasn't a case of both keepers playing really well or anything. It was a, a case of that like, there wasn't really clear-cut chances happening. And then, I mean, the second half from the highlights, we clearly didn't do that much because I didn't really see any highlights of us in the second half. It was more just, I think, the Falkirk missed chance with a back post header and then one or two other half chances. But I think the fact that we're playing a bit better, although uh, Morton away is a traditionally like, tough sort of venue, they've actually not got that bad a home record as well, mainly just the fact that the they make sure that they're hard to beat. I know they'll not like that saying, but they are. They, they, the way they play, they, they, they are hard to beat. But it's just the case of, I mean, we went there last season and won twice, didn't we? So, I, I mean, why can't we just go yeah, and one win and one the... draw. Just, one 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 draw, draw, yeah. uh, just before all the modern the... supporters that are going to listen to this jump uh, down your throat. and I, The <laughs> world's worst nil-nil draw. The one at the end of the season that was, mm. it was a dead rubber no one cared about and it was genuinely uh, awful. But uh, no, I, I think uh, the fact that we're now playing a bit better, I definitely think that we've got more uh, more high hopes going into it anyway than if we had been still playing garbage and uh, still in the sort of away form that we're in. Yeah, I um, for me last week was really positive to see a lot of the resilience because I don't think we've really seen that as much. Um, mm-hmm. So much from Rovers, even the one one game that we did win before, Partick Thistle. It was kind of like Partick Thistle were going forward, but I didn't I struggled to really remember too much about that game in terms of them knocking on the door, like having clear cut chances. Whereas last week we we did really well to limit Falkirk. Firstly, um, listening to the the, the Falkirk Daft podcast, um, they were sort of talking about uh, among other things. They were talking about how well we marshaled. Spencer and Tate, like really saying that Spencer and Tate didn't get into the game. And I think you've got to give a bit of credit there um, in terms of how well Byrne and Matthews did uh, in those positions. But also as well, I I, I feel like the, sh- the stats were a bit misleading in the sense that Rovers were still going forward. We were still getting the ball into the final third. We just weren't really doing that much. I mean, I don't know about like Blair and, and Duncan and whether you would agree with that. But I think like, I mean, really, you've got the one at the end where Smith, if you can play in Jamieson, then you're looking at a one-on-one and you would be optimistic about that. But still, we were quite aggressive going forwards in terms of it. I, 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 yes and no. Um, I think <laughs> my <clears throat> kind of immediate point would be that once we had the lead, I thought we handled the game really well. And actually, I think Falkirk's lack of chances was down to the way that we set up, down to the way we forced them to play, where really all they could do was get crosses into the box that Hanlon and Murray could head away. And to an extent, I think to achieve that, we gave up a little bit going forward ourselves, but we were 1-0 up. So that was perfectly legitimate and, and kind of carried through. You know, they really only managed to create one or two chances in the whole game. And as you say, Scott, you know, Dylan take the best one and then couldn't get it close to the goal. So I think it's a, I would put it down as a a question mark, you know, a, a lack of evidence as opposed to evidence for or against the the Rovers' ability to create chances. Because yeah. I think we, we didn't see it, but I think we didn't see it because we didn't have to, as opposed to we tried and couldn't do it, uh, if yeah. that makes sense. It was um, listening to the Terrace just before I came on there, and that was pretty much what Fraser Clark was saying, similar. He was sort of like, Rovers probably could have kicked on based on... You could think that Rovers could have kicked on and tried to go for three or four, but given the result against Hamilton, just show up. Just get the result over the line. And I think that's probably a fair comment. Um, Blair, just to come to yourself next. Uh, Morton have brought in 13 signings in the summer. One's already departed. Um, and they replaced them almost immediately um, with a potential cult hero. Um are you expecting quite a big change in Morton? And just talk about the Jets situation, just because it seems a lot of nuts. I was going to say, we've got it, right? Aye. Um, 
<clears throat> so for anybody who's not familiar with the story, um, Morton, I don't know where you've been, but Morton, <laughs> Morton obviously signed Jet, J. Emmanuel Thomas, a man who names himself after an aeroplane and got arrested on his way onto an aeroplane with a bag full of marijuana. Um, wow. Like, in terms of the stories you were expecting to come out of the Scottish Championship, I have to say it wasn't up there with the one I was expecting. Um, yeah, an absolutely mental situation. I have to say, though, I, I'm, I, I mean, I didn't think he was a good signing in the first place, and I, I said as much um, in, a, in a previous show. Um, he's a, a big lump. But um, they've probably they've probably replaced him with better, um, which is, I mean, the jury's still out, but they've got this young boy in from uh, Motherwell. I'm not even going to attempt his name. Um, but he, he, what is he, Serbian under-21 international? Yeah, Philip uh, Stupinavic, he's called. We'll go with that. Um, big Phil. Um, and I just, I, I don't know, like, it's, a wee bit frustrating from the point of view that, I mean, if he is good, and that's a massive if, like, he, he kind of, he'd have been the kind of player we'd have been looking for, I would imagine, uh, as he well. Won, he got goal of the season in his, um, in his league last season, because there was a, basically it was a counter-attack of sorts, um, and he's noticed the keeper's been off his line um, from about, I don't know, he must have been about 55, 60 yards out. And he just hammers a shot, and it just goes right over the keeper. So, big Kev. Okay. Uh, he's not going to be. To be fair, he's not going to be doing that at Capolo. Uh, Capolo is Capolo <laughs> is is literally where football goes to die. So he's going to basically spend most of his day jumping and trying to head at a ball. Um, is is what I'd imagine he's going to be doing. Um, yeah, I I, I just I don't know. Like Morton to me, I, I still don't. I don't see any major strength in, in their side. And this is obviously going to come back to bite me, but I just don't see anything that kind of jumps out at me on paper as being a you know, a player that they've brought in that you go, oh by the way, he he's he's decent or he'll he'll do them a job kind of thing. I'm I'm not really seeing it. But it's Doogie Emery and he'll probably try and just kick the living crap out of us for ninety minutes. So um yeah it'll be an I think it will be an interesting game because it's going to be a very different it's going to be a very different game for us in the sense that we've played against teams that play football. So Falkirk obviously play some really good football and they, they move the ball really well and we kind of coped okay with it, but it, it stifled us because we had to stifle them. We've played Hamilton who didn't really look up to very much and we kind of got into a really good position and then just took our foot off the gas a wee bit too early and it kind of came back to bite us. But, I mean, Livingston... Maybe the more physical sides that we've played, but I think this will be the first time we play a team that are likely to kick. Well, like I say, I, I'm saying this because I, I really detest Morton and I detest Dougie Emery, but I do kind of feel like they're going to try and kick us up and down the park. So yeah. we'll wait and see. Well, you say that. And say their, that. Uh, their 100 plus yellow cards last season <laughs> would suggest that you would be right. Poor misunderstood Morton. You'd never. Happen to have glanced at the fair play table for this season, have you? No. Oh, well, we're bound to be like the worst off we've had. By a mile. Um, I was going to say other red cards. Well, we've got 21 yellow cards, which is four more than anybody else, uh, including Morton. Um, but then we also have two uh, two straight red cards in addition to that. So, um, Wait yeah. a minute, Morton? Uh, Morton are mid-table, uh, fifth in the league with uh, They're having 17... a terrible season by their standards. Yeah, seventeen yellow cards and no red cards. They're really, uh, really lacking. And, um, and to be fair, I mean, I, like I don't know an awful lot about um, some of the guys that they've brought in. Uh, brought in, sorry, but I don't think you're looking at, you know, sort of the monsters from Space Jam coming in as as reinforcements. <laughs> I mean, they brought in the boy who was at Dunfermline last season. Uh, Muffet. Owen Moffat, mm -hmm. just a wee guy. Uh, Niall He's McGinn, decent, though, to be fair, he is he is probably their best footballer. I think um, Ian Wilson. If Ian Wilson stays fit, he can make yeah. a big impact. That's a for massive him. if, though. Yeah, I know. I'm... like huge if. Yeah. To be no, fair, I'm when Morton, uh, 
to be fair, when Morton signed Owen Moffat, I actually almost thought that's not the right club for you. Like straight away off the bat when they signed yeah. him, I thought like uh, when I looked I at exactly how agree. him and like say Ben Summers played last season at Dunfermline, I thought they liked to get the ball on the ground and they looked like the two guys that were going to create an end for the bars last season. This season, I was just like, well, he'll, if he does end up back in Scotland, because he was on loan for Blackpool or something last season. Um, I think that if he was coming back to Scotland, and specifically the Championship, not that I wanted us to go out and get him, but I thought he would be it like a team that would want to play a bit more football and a team that would kind of need somebody that's, well, they didn't have to be over six foot. They've clearly went and signed him because they thought, well, he's going to be a better player than what we've got, but he's also under six foot, which was a surprising signing, really, for, for Martin. Well, Martin yeah. seems to have just signed wingers in the summer, <laughs> basically. Um, Part they brought in, yeah, brought in Nathan Shaw from uh, Cali Thistle. Ali, I mean, Ali Crawford's not a winger, but he's a wide midfielder from St. Johnston. They brought in Owen Moffat. They brought in um, Niall McGinn. Uh, they already had Michael Garrity, still on left wingers here, by the way. We've not got to the other side yet. <laughs> um, and then they also brought in Aaron Lyle from Rangers as well, it, which yeah, I mean, it does trying. seem to be like um, Dougie Emery's trying to do like a John McGlynn style reinvention, but all in the one summer. He's not. He's still gone away and been. He doesn't go to sell scout for a couple back. of years. <laughs> it's, yeah, he's just decided like I'm fed up. Everybody calling my team hammer throwers. I'm just going to buy a load of like five foot six wingers and uh, play them all on the one side. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm genuinely quite interested to see what this Morton side looks like because I don't think they've been particularly cohesive up to this mm -hmm. point. But as you say, a lot of that was with um, Jet <laughs> grounded up front, just completely <laughs> immobile. So um, I'm, I'm quite pound. annoyed at Jet for getting himself arrested <laughs> and then subsequently having his contract torn up. Because I think it's given Dougie Emery a second shot at bringing in a big striker to try and, you know, <laughs> have all these wee guys dancing around them. Because um, I, I know they'd, um, in the summer, they were very optimistic about um, the lad Davies that they brought up from, what was it, Cornish Keys Nomads yeah. in Wales. Like, he'd scored a lot of goals down there, but that's not translated to up here. And then on top of that, uh, Lamar Reynolds as well came in. Um, he's not really set the heaven alight. Uh, so, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to us playing uh, Timid Frail Morton at the weekend. It's a big <laughs> change from uh, last season. I just uh, can't imagine it, though. I can't imagine... I can't imagine Doogie Emery's Morton playing football. Like, it just doesn't... It just doesn't work. Like, I keep waiting for, like, Muirhead or something to kind of... You know, like, in a pure WWE style, like, <laughs> and he's just going to kind of run out of the <laughs> run out of the dugout or whatever and just strip off the mask and he's, he's, he's there kicking lumps out of folk again. It just doesn't work. I feel like expecting to turn up and see all these laddies in, uh, like, jerseys that are too big for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Michael Owen back in the early 2000s. Yeah, yeah, we're only buying the kit once, boys, and you'll not be here in January, so we'll just get big ones. Yeah. Yeah, Morton um, kits only come from the big and tall store. <laughs> Watch this. Um, There'll be a, a free-flowing footballing masterclass on Saturday, hopefully for us. Uh, um, <laughs> Rovers-related questions, though. Ones, yeah. Let's uh, turn our focus on to the Rovers. Um, <laughs> are we all confident that it's going to remain as a 4 2 3 one now that we've got more than uh, the centre back, so Blair, you're shaking your head. Give me your thoughts. I have no idea. Like honestly, we're we're genuinely at a stage. I've not a Scooby what he's going to do on Saturday. Um, he started with a four and he finished with a five. What is he well, doing on Saturday? Daddy. Well, this is the thing. I'm still not sure. I no, thought he did. I. I thought it was like it was Stevenson was so a... high up though. That was the thing. But yeah. so was Dabo. Aye. <laughs> I don't know. I, I was because then at one point, it, like Liam Dick was on the overlap. Do you think? Yeah. What well, is it? Is it not? Yeah. I I couldn't quite work out. I'm with you. What was going on there either? 
Can I uh, just say for the photo for this on Twitter, I think we need to change it to basically just Bob Mortimer's face like Photoshop, but when Neil Collins replacing him to Would I Lie to You? And he's just like, <laughs> I once confused the whole podcast with football fans thinking that I'm not sure on what formation not, I was playing. And he's post match. Did he not say that he changed the shape? Well, if he did, was then it... I'm, I'm, I'm willing to. Uh... I, I, I can't remember well, if go he said it or if I can't even remember who was doing the interview because it wasn't a Davy. Um, it was Jim. But, Aye. Well, was it Jim? Ah, that's right. It was Jim. It was either Jim said it or the manager. Somebody mentioned a change of shape because that's when I was like, I, I thought I imagined it. Like, I, it did feel like a back three. I do still think he's bought players to play in a way that suits wing backs as opposed to full backs. Or marauding fullbacks. My worry with marauding fullbacks is that we don't have a plethora of quick centre halves. We maybe have good, solid, well positioned centre halves, but we don't have a, a huge amount of pace at the back. And and if you leave yourself open with those big old gaps at wide right and left, um, it does kind of leave us a wee bit more open. But God knows, honestly, he could do anything on Saturday. Nothing would surprise me. I think the thing about the four two three one, the main positive to come out of last Saturday for me was probably the performance of Dylan Easton and how well he did. Mm, he was you'd, great. You'd arguably lose that maybe. I mean, unless you played him sort of really high as the the higher of the, like the the midfielders, it's just a uh, very difficult to to sort of go into this and sort of say with any certainty as to what we'll do. Scott, I'm just going to come to you. Obviously, it's been a wee while since you've been on. Um, just what are your thoughts on how well things have been going recently in terms of the, the sort of performance against Aki's sort of for 80 minutes and then the Falkirk game? I know that you obviously didn't see that, but I know that we'd had quite a uh, passionate discussion, shall we say, in the WhatsApp chat uh, back and forth. How are you feeling about things in terms of how it's looking now? And um, yeah, just are you feeling a bit more optimistic now um, in terms of where we're at? Yeah, I mean, you touched on it earlier about, like, last week. I think, actually, it was exactly the game that I wanted us to see winning. A 1-0 that we've actually kind of grinded out a wee bit, like, especially right on the back of that Hamilton game, because that Hamilton game, that's what kind of knocked it on the head for me to say, like, that there has to be something deeper here that's going on amongst the squad. Whether they know it's happening or think it's happening, it's happening. So something had to change and something had to happen. I don't know what was said, obviously, in the run-up to this Falkirk game, but they, they managed to somehow escape that sort of late uh, nonsense that had been going on. And that the fact that, to be honest, from what I could see from you guys, obviously chatting in the group chat when I caught up with, with the game and then watching the highlights, we never looked like we were in any stage of panic at any point, which was good to see. And it's actually something, as I say, that I wanted to see because it now makes you think, well, if we can play like this, then let's just try and take that forward. <laughs> It'll uh, save everybody a lot of uh, panic going through the season. But, I mean, last season, obviously, we, we had the... It was going for us, the late goals. This season, it's been going the other way around. But, no, I, I'm... Obviously, a little bit more optimistic you are when you've won a game because you yeah. uh, your your mindset changes straight away, thinking, "Oh well, we're actually feeling good about ourselves again." But yeah, I think um, we also have to be realistic and go, "Well, it's only one game, and the fact that we're still um, kind of down the bottom end of the table." I know that everybody can beat everybody in the championship. You can be ninth one week and second the next week. But there has been already like that top three have kind of pulled away a little bit for now. But it's still only six, seven games into the season that at the end of the day, if you can go on a, say you win like what Falkirk did, five games in a row, you're straight away, away up to join the leaders again. So if we can uh, bounce back with, with another win this weekend, then straight away, I think you're pretty much up touching distance of the playoffs again. So as I say, yeah. it's... Um, Definitely a bit more upbeat now, but I just hope that we can... I, you just don't want to see us going backwards again. You want to see us actually, with all these players coming back, an improvement and that we we are showing signs of, of that from last week. Yeah, 100%. I think that 
particularly given who we're playing this weekend. Uh, given like Morton are just a point behind us, so we would get automatically leapfrogged by them if we did lose this one per chance. But yeah, um, it's all about the momentum now, really, and just sort of seeing where we can go with it. Um, in terms of squad options, uh, just to come to you, uh, Blair. <laughs> Very direct question. This does Scott Brown merit a start for this one? Do you think? Yeah, I think he does. Um, I think the energy he gives you the. <clears throat> I'd, like, I like I I had him in my team for Saturday. To be fair, if he was fit, I'd I'd have played him on Saturday. Um, I had a Ross Matthews. Ross was great. Um, on Saturday, nothing against him at all. But I do think, um, I do think Scott offers you more. Um, just in his sort of general management of the game and the way that he plays. Um, I think he's he's really really important for us actually. If I'm honest, going forward, so I'd like to see him um back in. Um, I can't imagine there'll be a huge number of changes from the weekend. But the the good thing now is <clears throat> there's literally nobody on the park that you go, there's nobody else that can play there, so he has to play. Mm-hmm. And actually, I, I mean, we, talk, we joked about the right back thing. Like, I can't remember a time when we could genuinely say, you've got two options at right back, you've got two options at left back. You've got potentially three options for two centre halves. You've got Byrne, Matthews, and Brown can all play the two holding roles if you play a two. You've got, you know, um, Josh Mullen. You've got Dylan Easton. You've got Pollock. You've got, I mean, the list goes on in terms of those attacking players, Connolly, and yeah. I mean, and then you've got Smith. You've got Hamilton. There are players that you go. He's almost guaranteed to start because he's in form or he's playing well. But in every single position, there is somebody else that can play there and they're not out of position. It's mental. Yeah. I think that um, my next question was for you, Duncan. Um, with the wingers, would you change that up at all? Or I know that Pollock came off uh, midway through the second half, maybe looked like he'd taken a bit of a knock. Um, and then you've got Aidan Connolly, who's had a wee run of games as well. Would you be looking to change the wingers up at all? Or would you be looking to keep those the same and just try and sort of harness the, the sort of consistency in the squad? Uh, so the way I've, uh, when I was thinking about it beforehand, I have actually kept them the same. I've got Pollock and Connolly. If there is 5% of a knock, for for either one of them, I think I would make the change, uh, and I would bring in um, Mullen or Gibson or or you know whoever else is is next in the the pecking order. There's, there's plenty um, there in reserve. It, that actually, to go back a, a step briefly, ties into the whole thing about the go to the back three as well for me. So actually. I think we've now got the defenders to do it. I don't think we have the forward players to do it. Or almost we have too many forward players who don't fit that. So I just as you were talking about there, I was kind of hastily trying to scribble out, right, oh, if we played a back three, what does the rest of the team then look like? And instead of telling you the team, I'll tell you the, the players I've got on the bench, the players who don't get into that team, Jameson, Pollock, Gibson, Mullen, Connolly, Good players, like good. Yeah. Basically, any two of them should really be starting in a rover starting eleven. I think you end up having to try and kind of. I think the thing with the. I don't think the back three is an option until Sam Stanton is back, because you ask so much of someone in your sort of central, kind of sort of your number ten, but it's so much more than that in that system. And I think Sam Stanton's the only one really who can kind of do it all. Um, whereas in the four two three one with Easton as the ten, I think is he was brilliant on um, Saturday. So I was kind of more than happy enough. Whereas the, you're asking him to do even more in that system, and then as I say, what you've got is a whole load of guys who are really really good sitting on the bench watching them. And all those guys I mentioned, there's only really one place in that team for them, it's to come on in place of Dylan Easton. I don't think it's the best use of the resources that we've got. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, no, sorry, to answer your question, in terms of the wingers, I think um, I would like to see more of Lewis Gibson. I feel like I've not seen very much of him at all recently. Um, yeah. 
and I don't think there's been anything in terms of his performances that would sort of warrant that or, or suggest that. Um, he would be almost sort of my uh, my first reserve, I suppose. Um, I really liked what I've seen from Pollock. If he's fit, I would I would keep him. And I think um, Aidan Connolly's been been decent as well. So I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have enough of a case to drop either of them. Um, to be fair, but uh, yes, I would like to see more of um, Lewis Gibson, if at all possible, please, Neil. Yeah, I think that it's been. Um... I'd say it's probably been quite harsh on Gibson, the fact that he's not made it onto the pitch over the last few games. Uh, I think that it's safe to say that he's probably been one of the, the players that's really stood out in terms of how much he stood up during that poor run of form. So then to, to sort of come out and, again, we get the win against Falkirk, he doesn't feature. Last game we got on, limited time against Dunfermline with 10 men. Really not going to be the game for him to showcase his skills. And then the game before that, we at air. He really, again, powered a work to actually get us the first two goals um, Scott just to come back to you uh, Frankie Dabo's had another week of training under his belt are you going to stick or twist in terms of your, your right back position would you have Frankie in or would you keep Kieran Freeman in uh, I would just stick with it for now I mean we won last week so I, I kind of go along the lines of I wouldn't be changing too much because these guys have just won a game which we've been asking them to do for weeks now and yeah if they were to be just instantly jocked, then you you can just imagine how good they must feel about themselves walking into work on Monday and then going, I've just been dropped like by the weekend <laughs> after winning a game. So to be honest, uh, even though I say that, I think I've made one or two changes myself for my lineup. But <laughs> I, I do think that Freeman, that's Scott Fleming. He's relentless. I, I do think that. Uh, Freeman has done pretty well in the two games that he's been back. He's uh, offered, actually, I would say more in terms of going forward than what we've seen before he got like his injuries and stuff like that. I think yeah. that was something that people were kind of going against him with, was saying, like, oh, he's not really offering us much going forward. And that's what we had criticism-wise for Liam Dick last season. Whereas now, he actually, I mean, I think against uh, Hamilton, he ended up having one or two shots in the box that he was that far forward so I think um, this might sound honest, a bit cliched as well but sorry I was just going to say really quickly on that point Scott I wonder how much of that's Neil Collins hmm. I, I genuinely think there is a there is a fullback thing like as much as anything else his style of play is very much get them up and get them in your face and I do wonder if the 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 hesitation that we saw before was just the way that Murray had them set up See, it's right. funny you say that because we were talking about that in the car on the way to the game um, on Saturday and more or less came to the same conclusion because you think, I, I could only think it was either that or he must have been carrying some kind of injury because on yeah. the evidence of pre-season and the League Cup games, I would have said to you, oh, Kieran Freeman's not that kind of player. Like, I, he just doesn't get forward. And I think that was a little bit, if there was any disgruntlement, it was based on that. But then... The Hamilton game in particular, as you say, he and then great. Saturday as well, he looked like he was totally different. But you think, well, it can't be like confidence, or at least not innate confidence, because why would you be unconfident at the start of the season but confident now? It doesn't make any sense. So either it's Neil Collins giving him some sort of belief that he didn't have, or as you say, what I think is more likely is it's Neil Collins actually giving him instructions to say, Either go and do this, or you are allowed to go and do this, because um, he does. He looks like a completely different player, and uh, yeah, no. for for the better. I, I thought um, Hamilton in particular. I thought he was excellent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would agree with that um, in terms of how well he's done coming back into the team, in particular back off the injury, and it probably translates as well a lot to what's been said about the likes of Dylan Easton, for instance, when you listen to interviews with him and he's talking about how he's really enjoying sort of the, the license that he's been given um, in terms of the role that he's playing at the moment. Um, another player I just want to touch on very quickly, um, one that's I think is likely to be on the bench come Saturday, but Lewis Jamieson um, seems to have been coming a bit of flack from sort of the supporters over the last few games. Um, how do you think that do you think it's just really hard to, to figure out it in terms of how much will change if he can get on the goal trail? 
Like just because it's, I feel like well, he's came into a lot of, he does a lot of the work, hard work in terms of the running, but that's not enough for people. Um, so I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. Just I'll start with you, Blair. What are your thoughts on it? No, honestly, I, I, so I, this is the bit that I, I least enjoy about doing a podcast because I'm not a fan of doing this. I, I'm not convinced. I'm really not. Um, I'm not seeing an awful lot that that is filling me with eternal hope, and maybe maybe it's just a you know the games that we've played or or the the way that we've set up or whatever. But um, I'm not even massively convinced he's doing the running that that we need him to do. Duncan, Duncan, you look yeah. unconvinced. Can I can I be the case for the defence? Yes, please. Or the the attack on his ears. Um, you said that before, and I, I I completely disagree. I think that the bare minimum that I think you get from Lewis Jameson is all the effort in the world. I think he is doing the running, and I know you said the running that we want him to do, but I think Aye. that he's doing his running, and I think a lot of the running he's been asked to do up till now has been completely thankless. I think that Dunfermline game is possibly, possibly yeah. the starkest example where... Oh, yeah, that's true. It, it, it basically didn't matter, and that's not his fault. Like, he could have been... He, he could have run twice as much and twice as far and twice, twice as fast, and we yeah. still wouldn't have had a shot on target in that game. Um, but I think the endeavour that was there was exactly what you would kind of want to see. And I think... Like, don't get me wrong, right? He's, he's not been... Um, tearing up strips or anything but I also don't think I don't think he's done very much wrong and I think if you took the numbers off the jerseys and you couldn't see who it was and this is going to sound like I'm picking on someone else but just by way of comparison I think if you looked at the performances this season of since Lewis Jameson came in and Callum Smith over the same period, and you didn't know who they were, and you didn't know which one had just come in, and which one we already know about. I don't think there would be anybody going. This guy's particularly better or worse than this guy. I think they've both basically done the same thing over the last few games, which mm-hmm. is lots of running, lots of thankless task, particularly kind of running about at the end of games where we're a couple of goals or you know we're up against it. Um, down to 10 men and they've not had the opportunities um, I mean I see there was that one at the end uh, against Falkirk the counter attack where they're both running they're both clear and Callum Smith makes an error with the, the pass if he doesn't and that ball goes across to Lewis Jameson Lewis Jameson scores is he suddenly twice as good next week I don't know probably not um, but I, I don't think I don't think it's very fair to be critical of him because I don't think he's done anything wrong. I think he's done what has been asked of him and what has been asked of him is stuff that doesn't make footballers look good. Um, and I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy. I've got no issues with it at all. I think um, he is... See, to go right back to the start of this conversation, we were talking about strikers and who can you bring in and all that kind of stuff, right? Despite everything I've just said, I wouldn't want a second Lewis Jameson. I think he, he fulfills <laughs> a very specific role. Like, that sounded harsher than I meant it to. That sounds like I'm on your side. <laughs> I hope um, he's not got a twin. What I mean is, like, he fills a, he fills a, a, a specific task, right? Yeah. Lewis Jameson has been brought in because he's going to do that running. And he's a young player and he's promising and you hope he's going to get you goals. But nobody, we didn't bring Lewis Jameson in thinking, there's your 20 goals a season. Brought him in mind of he's going to do your running, he's going to bring a bit of quality when he gets the chance. He's also not going to be absolutely kicking and screaming if he doesn't start every game. Like, he fulfills a purpose. I don't think you're going to get within reason better for, for that particular role. I'm not seeing other guys coming out of the Premiership on loan who are better than Lewis Jameson. I would definitely agree with that. Yeah. And Scott, hey. just to, to come to you. Um, pick a side, think... Scott. <laughs> yeah, pick a <laughs> side. <laughs> Who are you going with? Come on in, Scott, the water's warm. I, I would say that I, I kind of lean towards the way that Duncan's on about the fact that I, I actually think that, I, I've said that a few times, I, I class him as like what I would call a press and forward. And you do get that on Football Manager, so that's a thing. But uh, <laughs> it's he, he does... 
a lot of running and he does a lot of work off the ball that some folk will say, it, it, it's funny because see if a striker does it, or quotations a striker, he's uh, some sort of forward, as I say, but like, folk will say, oh, it's good in midfield if you can run about and cause havoc. And then again, it's like, it gets to a different position than running about's not good enough. It's it's a bit weird like that, how like, just because he's classed as a forward, automatically it seems like some folk think that, well, he needs to be scoring goals. Like, well, no, I mean, it, he created um, certainly one of the goals that down at air. It was his yeah, shot Callum that was rebounded. Exactly, to Smith. And to be fair, like, I kind of get what Duncan's saying about if you took, like, the... the uh, if, if you basically didn't know who these players were and you put Smith and Jameson up together, I actually think they do very similar jobs. And it's the fact that Callum Smith's had a season under his uh, books here and he's scored a few goals for us. So, like, folk have went, well, we know he can score goals. But it's... I actually think at the start of the season, Smith was getting asked to do a job that he really wasn't comfortable doing, but he's like, look, I'll do anything to play. But it's the fact that I, I, we just generally need, I know it's extremely hard to find, but we just generally need somebody that will stick between the posts and score goals. That's what we need now. And I'm hoping that Jack Hamilton's going to start doing that, just the fact that he he's shown in the last two games that he really, if he can get players in and around him, he's effective, like really effective. So I, I, mm-hmm. that's why I think that the whole Jameson thing is, if he can come on with 20 minutes to go, run at defenders and be involved in that sort of... I think he's got a purpose in the team, but I, I, I do kind of, at the same time, see why folk are starting to go, but we've signed a striker. He's no really an out-and-out striker. That's what folk need to get their head around. He, he just isn't. Yeah, that's that's exactly my issue. So <laughs> to, to rebuttal the whole thing and to come back to it, why have we signed Callum Smith again? What, like, because if that's what we're basically saying is we now have two Callum Smiths, like I also I'm, like I'm, Callum. I'm, Smith, sorry, I'm not. Fair. I'm still not convinced that the quality. He, he, I'd say he's probably got a maybe a slightly better touch, but I'm not entirely convinced that the quality difference between him and Callum Smith is astronomical. But so, hang on two seconds. So the other the other issue I have with this whole thing is, um, if he is being brought in as a forward. We don't need him. We needed a striker. We don't like the the substitutions at the moment. Maybe it's not his fault that the criticism I'm laying at him because he keeps bringing him on out wide. I, I'm, that's my my issue. I'm not convinced at all about him out wide because it's almost that thing of you know the thing you hated Duncan about um, Jamie Gullen right, yeah, when he played up front point. and he just went out wide. I'm like he, he, when he plays out wide, he doesn't stay out wide. I'm like it's he's he's neither one thing nor the other at this point, and I don't actually mean it. And I, I did preface this by saying it's not something I enjoy doing. It's not a direct criticism of him as a footballer. I just don't think he's what we need. I don't think he. I don't actually think he fits a purpose in our squad. That's the bit I would disagree with you on. I don't actually think he has a role. So my. <laughs> rebuttal to your rebuttal, Robbie. You'll need to stop <laughs> us at some point. Um, I think you're shopping in such a small market that yeah. you have to do these things. Like again, to go back to the start, we're talking about strikers. The type of striker that, the type of forward that Scott's talking about, that's seventy percent of the forwards at this level. Like yeah. if you think about the guys, even the guys that we've had. Guys who come in to play as forwards, it's Callum Smith, it's Jamie Gullen, it's all these guys who they they their game is based on hard work and they score the goals that they score because they work really hard and they're at the top end of the park and they get into the right positions enough of the time. You then have the other type of forwards, Brian Graham. Stands yeah. in the penalty spot, scores 20 goals a season because he's an incredible striker for this level. I said 70% of them are pressing forwards. Probably more than that. Even I was going to say, yeah, yeah. Doubts, probably like, even, like, you basically, because that's when you're saying, like, oh, we, we didn't really need um, Lewis Jameson. We needed a, a, a proper striker. Like, I saw this everybody all the time. Really? Yeah, totally. Like, that's, that's kind of, like, that's that's the problem is that there aren't very many of them, and the ones that there are are, are 
it's yeah. like blatantly obvious that they're good. It's the easiest player in the park to spot um, the quality in because it's about putting the ball on the goal. And really, you, you end up just playing the numbers with these sometimes, where it's a case of like, right, listen, we're going to get Brian Graham. Remember, we were also at that time, because we're fickle as fans, that just saying, <laughs> let's get anybody in the door because we've got Naval yeah. and Nate Hamilton. So yeah, that, why does that he not point, play the game? To be honest, I actually was this hoping is the I, can't, was, I can't get. I, I was hoping at the time, like it, it, I'm sure he's a full season loan, but at the time I was like, Let's get him to January and see how he's done. If he's not done much, send him back to St Mirren. We'll go for somebody else. It was more like, we do need a forward. And right now, I will take a forward that's just fit. Because at the end of the day, we were waiting on Jack Hamilton and Vaughan that were meant to be close to coming back. But it was like, well, we need somebody for two or three weeks at least to be able to help Callum Smith. Because Callum Smith is not going to be playing up on his own and scoring goals every week. Because... Not at championship level anyway, because it that's just not what he does. So I, yeah. I just think that at the time I could get the sign in, but now I actually do see where Blair's coming for it in terms of I don't think he's actually what we need now. But at the same time, we also thought we were getting Vaughn and Hamilton back and now we're just doing Hamilton. So yeah. Uh, yeah. we're kind of swinging I mean, around the boots now. But. I think he could take a, a great deal of confidence off the back of seeing the likes of Freeman come back into the team and perform so well. And like, I know that it's part and parcel of the football nowadays that like in particular, especially with social media, everyone's an expert. Everyone's going to have their say. So, so I think a lot of the, the sort of side of it is that like, just making sure that he's, it's just doing the, doing the bits that he needs to and keeping head as well. Um, I think that I would agree with what Duncan said. I think there has been quite a lot. Of, there's really a limited opportunities there. And I think that with a sample size, including that Dunfermline game, it does make it a lot more difficult. I think it's also made a lot worse by the fact that Jack Hamilton's came back in. And Jack Hamilton's very good at what Jack Hamilton does, which is he can body players out of the way. He can bring a version to play. And then as well, we've seen sort of November time last year, the uh, November, December, Jack Hamilton was sort of getting into the penalty box and scoring goals, sort of those sort of like, you think of the header against Arbroath and the 2 all draw, uh, game against, for, I know that against Ackies, he had obviously that absolute screamer, but then there was also the other side of his game. Back post header at Hamden yeah, as well. exactly. Yeah. Those types of It goals. just feels though, just, just really quickly, it just of feels course. that if that's the case, surely Freeman and Hamilton should be, not Freeman and Hamilton, Jesus Christ. Um, Jameson. <laughs> yeah, and Hamilton. Together, should be a good pairing. Like, if Hamilton's up there bodying and he's got somebody who's going to do the running and be around him in the, that sort of Lewis Vaughan mould, then then surely that should be where he's getting used. But Connolly is... Oh my God, I'm doing it all over the shop tonight. <laughs> Collins is just not doing it. That's mm-hmm. twice now he's brought him off the bench and twice he's basically stuck him out wide right. And I- So, again... <laughs> The, the, I think the only so <laughs> at East End Park Hamilton came back. He did back. try and stop us, Robbie. Sorry, nah, it's when fine, he came it's off fine. the bench. I'm loving this. So Hamilton was only just back for East End Park. He never really got the chance. For yeah, that that's one. right. And then um, did we go straight to Hamilton Hamil- after that? Hamilton. Yeah. Hamilton. But Hamilton. that's Hamilton. the thing. He brought him on. He brought him on in wide, like wide right, as a, we right, effectively like, a right midfielder playing a four-two-three-one in that game though. So it, you've only got your one forward. You're but even the middle of the three, then like back if like I don't know, he's not a number ten though, is he? I hoped he kind of would be, or like somebody would be, um, yeah, coming in. But that I mean that in itself is a big ask, like putting a guy like that up top on his own. But I mean, even I think the plan would have been Hamilton and Vaughn as the starting two. I think that's yeah. increasingly, mm-hmm. I don't know, obvious or increasingly apparent that Vaughan was going to be used as the striker. And as Scott says, when Jameson came in, Vaughan was available. Um, and that's why I think now, again, you go back to, like, you, you don't just need a body up front. You need an out and out striker. But they're, they're rarer than hen's teeth. And this yeah. is why we end up with um, Tommy Adeloy. It is, like, a name that's on everybody's lips because he is yeah. an actual out and out striker. Because I mean, the other one that's that's available, but which hasn't been mentioned because he doesn't fit the bill, is Gabby McGill. Because Gabby McGill 
is the same as all these other guys. Runs about, kicks folk, gives you everything. He'll play with a hernia. He'll play with an arm hanging off. Will <laughs> score five goals a season. And it's like, right, cool. We have enough of those. Like <laughs> the, we've got so many of those. We're having to now ship some of them to Ireland. Like that. <laughs> we just need a big immobile lump to stand in the penalty box, not get arrested for importing drugs into the country. <laughs> And kick Not the seal clubbing. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, aye, exactly. Aye. Uh, don't go to John Fredrickson's Instagram page if you're uh, if you're lacking in curiosity there. Um, so yeah, <laughs> uh, we'll go through our uh, lineups. For me, I'm just going to keep it simple. I would say exactly the same, but Gibson in for Connolly, uh, Duncan. I think you said that you were. Um, I've got exactly the same as Saturday, except I have Scott Brown in for Ross Matthews. Me but too. I'm not overly. Uh, you just copy the it because that right. doesn't come in. <laughs> no, that's the team I picked for Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, Scott? Yeah, to be honest, I, I've kind of gone along the same lines. I, like, originally, before the Falkirk game, I actually was starting to agree that I thought that Sean Byrne was very quiet in the start of the season. Obviously, he got sent off and was suspended and stuff like that, but the games he had played... I, I I just felt we weren't seeing what we saw last season in terms of controlling a game, getting the ball down, giving it to the players that are going to go and create the chances and kind of taking the pressure off the defence. Whereas from what I heard and from what I've seen in the highlights of the Falkirk game and then what I've seen in the parts of the Hamilton game, I actually think he's starting to get back to how he was last season. And I think that's the player that we need because at the end of the day, he's there to kind of protect the back four a wee bit. Whereas, mm-hmm. like, say, your Ross Matthews or your Scott Brown or whoever's going to play beside him, or, or even Stanton when he's back fit, that's their, that's their like, uh, comfort blanket of going, right, you can go more forward now because we've got Byrne there beside you who's going to, I mean, he's shown that he doesn't like to shoot. So, for instance, I'm happy for him <laughs> to just stand back and just protect the back four. So if you... I, I, I've brought in Scott Brown just because... I think a lot of folk have disagreed. I think he's a better footballer than Ross Matthews, but I I I just think that Scott Brown brings so much to the game, and we've shown that we've actually missed him a lot this season already. I just and it, again, I don't think Ross Matthews played terrible. I just think that Scott Brown brings that much that I just want him in the team as soon as he's fit. So I I agree with the guys that yeah, um, that would probably be my only change this week. Again, I would agree that if Pollock is not fit, I don't think I would actually go with Mullen. I think I would bring in Gibson purely because I would like somebody that's like Pollock, who's very direct. Mm. Gibson, I, I'm actually waiting for the day that you can play Pollock and Gibson on either side. Can you imagine the two fullbacks before that game going, well, we're going to be busy the day because they're just going to keep running at us. And the amount of shots that we'll probably get away in that game as well. Yeah, so I, I, I do think logic. that these sort of guys that Gibson, I think, would be suited as well. He likes to get stuck in. So I think a game against Morton would also suit him. So I, I think if, if Pollock is even 80% fit, I would say, look, you can bring him on for 20 minutes and just play Gibson, to be honest. But other than that, I would just keep it the same, to be honest, and make sure that's a back four. Uh, I'm very intrigued as well to see how Kirk Broadfoot fits in to that Morton lineup as well. Uh, he's still out there. He still exists. I cannot believe he's still gone. It's, it's incredible. Well, Iron Man. Um, but aye, less about that for now. Um, any predictions for Saturday? <sighs> Blair? Uh, well, we do have a prediction league. Um, mm. And I have made my prediction. Um, I think we, I don't want to say it out loud, I think we win to nil. Um, I genuinely, I've, I feel feel quite confident actually about Saturday. Um, um, what I does, felt confident before last Saturday. So, What does Leslie think? Just yeah, so we can find that's out what actually happened. One. Hey, I got a four point weekend last weekend too. He wasn't the only mm. one. And he did last week. Even even when we were he like Les is actually getting a little bit spooky now. Like he predicted us so he predicted us to lose to nothing to the pars. He predicted us to have a score draw against Hamilton. 
and then he predicted that we would beat Falkirk and they wouldn't score. He's not telling us he's winning money, by the way. Uh, he's surely winning money, by the way. He's currently like, stoting about in a different... He's paying for him to fly to Japan six times a year. <laughs> <laughs> he's stoting about in a different time zone right now rather than in a drunken stupor based on that group chat that we had earlier. He was firing unicorns in there and everything by accident, which was hilarious to watch. Um, aye. That's our, that's our new game on the show next week. Where in the world is Les? Aye, wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> Duncan, you got any prediction um, going for this? Yeah, I think I would agree. A score, uh, sorry, uh, a Rovers win to nil would be nice and, and would kind of make sense. Uh, you know, I, I don't think Morton, this real famous last word stuff, I don't think Morton looked like a side with a lot of goals in them. If Kirk Broadfoot is playing, that is an opportunity, you would have <laughs> to think. Um, right, so hopefully we, we've we've turned a corner. Um and it is just turning a corner. It's not a case of having to, you know, turn a battleship around with this rover side. Hopefully it is a case of like, right, we're back on the right track. Real mixed metaphors here. Batter on. <laughs> couple of couple of wins in a row and, and get back to it. But um yes. I agree with something Blair said about seven hours ago, which is I think you've really got to be winning this game. Yeah. Given the way we start the season, you've got to take three points at Capital. That was before we got into the Oxford Debating Club. Uh, but yeah, very keen to see how Morton fans, we're on a bit of a streak in terms of getting uh, pulled up for quotes out of our last few podcasts, so very keen to see what gets pulled oh, out of this one by the opposition fans. Ten pot chat. Uh, I know, I know. But, uh, Scott, for you? Well, I made my prediction on Monday and I've already forgot what I predicted, so I've probably changed my <laughs> mind somehow since then. Uh, ah, I'll well. find it on Saturday, I suppose, if I got it right, but... Uh, I think just looking at it now, I, yeah, I agree. I think if we can get another clean sheet, another win, it just it's more confidence just to keep going forward into the next week as well. And I mean, it's only like a few weeks away, and we're going to be running in a, a right good thick of games in terms of in quick time. So I think the more you do, you want to be going into them games in good form. You don't want to be going into that in a slump where you're like constantly into games and you going there's no. But then I know that players and managers then go, ah, but it's better to be uh, the game's there because then we can change it. But it's like, well, it's there also that that you've not had time to fix what might have been an issue. So I think uh, if we can just keep winning, then, yeah, it's going to be for the better. But if if it's a scrappy 1-0, I'll take it any day of the week. um, And hopefully it's a Kirk Broadfoot on goal, to be honest. Ah, well, <laughs> that would be uh, very amusing if it was. Um, shall we have a game of uh, Shoot McStair, Shoot Dargo? Yes, we should. Excellent, Go excellent. Love to hear it. Uh, right, okay. So, got seven clues for this one. Um, branching out. I, for number one, am a John McGlynn signing. Thank you. Thank you, Robbie. That's all I need. <laughs> I take feedback on board. I, I, take I feedback need an era. I mean, I that's two eras, that's, that's, Yeah, that's good. Actually, I didn't yeah. want to make it one. Any opening bids on our John McGlynn mark? Uh, Sir Robert of Sloan. Okay. Uh, Kieran MacDonald. Oh, I've not heard Lumsden. from him. Duncan's going for a repeat. We don't had Todd Lumsden as we an did. answer. <laughs> I remember seeing him recently. Recently watching. That was the one. That was the one that was the, the English guy that had scored, and we couldn't remember him having scored two goals. Oh, so bad. I, I, I remember I uh, just recently watching the podcast. My dad, he said he, he came out with one answer. I went, surely they will only come up with that because that's been done. It was like Liam Buchanan or so. I was like, I'm sure we've had him recently. I was like, they're not going to do that twice in a row. It's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, let's we'll just you wait and see. <laughs> Certainly, <laughs> going to be Rob, really Robbie's awkward. Four D chess. Really set, awkward if it's closes. Liam McCarran for this one, eh? <laughs> Seventy-six games, six goals, according to Wikipedia. Six goals and seventy-six six games. Goals. That's no Bobby Sloan then. Mm. Seventy-six games. So that's got to be what three seasons. 
unless it's two seasons properly mm. full seasons. I, Wikipedia, I think, tends to go scored a few goals, league games. So I think you're probably looking at three seasons, I would guess. Yeah. yeah. Although it's only just a touch over. So it's kind of three seasons with injuries. Yeah. Or two with Wikipedia including yeah. some cup games. It's a John McGlynn sign and it's three seasons. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe might... two full seasons with a set of playoffs. Yeah. We played every no, single game. Again, it's a John McGlynn sign, so he'll have been injured <laughs> at least once. <laughs> I think I'll, I'll stick with Kieran two? McDonald just because I remember him scoring like three in a season and I think if he'd scored because yeah. he he was definitely two seasons was he in a third with us? I can't no, think because he, had, he left was it just the league one win and then the COVID season the yeah. championship was that? Right. Yeah I think so I, I'm, I'll uh, stick with McDonald um, I'm confident he got six goals to be fair, um, he, d- he did. He didn't have many injuries, so there's every chance he played seventy six games in two seasons. And we did well, as we said earlier, we didn't have two left backs either. To choose for... No, I didn't. Uh, I'm not confident about this, but uh, Stephen Simmons, mm. Blair, um, no idea. Craig Wilson. He played more than 76 okay. games in a row. Right. <laughs> he also probably never scored six times either. I scored the first goal at Starks Park after we won promotion back to the second tier. Which time round? Ah, but which time? <laughs> <laughs> John McGlynn signing, 76 games, six goals, according to Wikipedia who scored the first goal at Starks after we got promotion back to the second tier. Season undefined. Ugh. I'm tempted like just to sit like, my answer oh, because he's you been know... really harsh there because that could be two. And I have no idea who either of them are. But so, like... I'm trying to remember because I was at the first game we got promoted because it was our broth at home and we beat them... Three, because it was COVID. Is, it, is this, is the, this second the most recent one? The second yeah. time, yeah. We beat our broth because I didn't think we were going to do well. Oh, I, we won 3 0. We played them off the park. I, we I won 3 0, I think. Yeah. I think Manny Duku might have scored the first. And he didn't play 76 games. He started that season like a house on fire, scored loads of the that. I have a funny feeling. But then. Or was it? I'll go Dylan Tate. Dylan Tate. I I don't know why, but I, I'm j- I'm gonna stick with my answer purely. It's that Ryan McCord thing in the back of my head because I changed that answer a few weeks ago. <laughs> I, but I just think there's nothing still to rule out that it could be Keenan McDonald, so I'm just gonna stick with it for now. Duncan, your last bit was Stephen Simmons. Uh, I'll stick with Stephen Simmons. I'm not going to All right. Okay, on to clue four. I once featured in a Scottish Cup final for the losing team. Well, I think that might be knocking Keenan McDonald out there. Don't know about you guys, but I think that's making me think this could be the first time in with that one. Mm. Yeah. I'm trying to think who else is. Because I can't remember the first game back after we got promoted the first time. No, but the first time, as you said, that our Brove game, think of like COVID season, we, we had quite a new squad that year. A lot of guys we hadn't even really heard of. It wasn't the guys that I think were in Scottish Cup finals before, because otherwise we'd have heard of them. Nah, because it was like Kozi Ugu, Manny Duku, and Kieran Bowie was in that side. Like, not guys that meet this criteria. Uh, uh, I'm going to stick with Stephen Simmons because it feels like losing a Cup final would be 
<laughs> I'm not convinced he might need to do the others, but I mean, reasonably, he could have played in a cup final. Arcs. That's what I'm thinking. Scott, player. <laughs> The only, see, it's going to sound mental. The only name I've got in my head, I can't put him in a Scott. I, I feel like he was in a cup final, but I think it was maybe a league cup final. And, ah, oh, no. Nah. Dan Armstrong? Dan Armstrong? Was in that squad. Did he not, did he not get to a cup final with Ross County? Danny Armstrong must have scored more than six goals for us, surely. Oh, mm. uh, yeah, probably, actually. I, I think he might have been around that, Mark, to be fair. I don't think he... He got, like... Because he was... Was it two spells we had him? Yeah. Mm. And it wouldn't I, have been, I think wouldn't the be first 76 time, games either. That's what I, say, I would have said. F- a bit of time to get going. 76 games. I would have said no. fewer than 76 games and more than... Se- yeah, not yeah, I think it must, be first, it must be first era. Yeah. I started leaning towards, could this be, like, a young Hearts boy we had? But then... I don't remember any of them coming and playing 76 games. They were all like there for a season and gone. I, so to I, recap, I know it's not Kieran McDonald, but I genuinely have no other answer right now. But uh, I, I will be changing that at some point. <laughs> right. So to recap, and I'll add in clue number five to this now. John McGlynn signing 76 games. Six goals, according to Wikipedia. They scored the first goal at Starks after promotion back to the second tier. They once featured in a Scottish Cup final for the losing side. And clue five, I featured both on the pitch and the backroom staff. For said Scottish Cup final defeat team? For Rovers. Oh, for Rovers. Oh. Oh. Oh, Williamson. Shed. Ah, uh, that's probably every chance to be fair. That'd yeah, be about that time and he was a physio, wasn't he? He lost uh, a cup final with Dunfermline. He did. He convinced well, Clue him last time. Is... Well, yeah, Clue, six, convinced... <laughs> Clue 6 is in Scotland, I have only ever played for teams in a KY postcode. And clue seven, after my time at Rovers, I played for four Icelandic teams. Congratulations, <laughs> player. I'll take he was it. on the bench for that cup final. The final yep. were getting beat with about five minutes left. And I think he was the youngest player in the squad. And All he right. just got, uh, he just took his, his tracksuit off and just right. went and stood next to Jim McIntyre. Jim McIntyre was like, we're getting beat anyway. <laughs> like, Funny, well. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have had him involved that early in the season. Like, I don't remember him being the season we came up. I kind of remember him after that. He missed four months in that season with an injury, which probably yeah. fits into what you were actually saying earlier on about um, like three. I don't know how many seasons. I think it must have been three that he was with us, but he did miss a big chunk of that season due to injury. Because the season after was Aberdeen, wasn't it? Uh, it wasn't the season yeah. we came up. It was the season. It was later. the season we came up. That's the it's that's funny. the season I remember him being involved. That goal Aye. against Aberdeen in the cup. So when, you, when you say about like you need to get the era to get it out, whenever I think about McGunn's first era, I think of the game at Pataudry and thought, oh, yeah. who's in that? That's where I got Stephen Simmons from. So like, who's yeah. in that side? Though work through yeah, them. Totally. Should have thought about the first leg. Yeah. <laughs> the first leg, you know what I mean? The first game. Yeah. Uh, uh, that, was what that the first season that we signed Williamson when we came up? No, he scored I was his first say, goal I feel for like us the season the squad before. That, I thought he was he in got, the squad when we won the league. Yeah, he came in on loan from Dunfermline. Um, uh, he scored against Stranraer um, away. Uh, and then after sort of getting released by them at the end of that season, he just came along to us. No, uh, fair enough. It's yeah. funny, I don't remember that at all. I don't remember him being on loan. That's my, my classic John McGlynn Mark One era signing <laughs> knowledge. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I don't remember that at all. There you go. There we have it. Well, uh, that was a good one. Uh, yeah. Well Good done, effort boy. there, guys. Um, we will no doubt be back on Sunday, of course, to cover off hopefully another Rovers score win. Um, nothing for Morton, but yeah, thank you for <laughs> taking the time to listen. We will be um, 
we'll be back for that one. But yeah, on top of that, as ever, if you can follow us on the socials, please make sure to share the video and get your predictions in, of course, as well. And we'll make sure that there's a link for that in the bio. Uh, but yeah, thank you for taking the time for to listen and bye for now. <laughs>